Hello, we are rapidly approaching the end of 2023, which means best books of the year lists are starting to come out. We readers love a geeky book list, and I find it really useful to peruse these lists to see what I've read, what I've been meaning to read, and what books I might have missed that I should catch up on. So Publishers Weekly just published their best books of the year big group recently. Uh, I'm going to focus on the fiction section because I primarily read fiction, but there are a whole other number of categories. And I have read some of these books, uh, but not all that many because this is a US publication and I live in the UK, so not every book that's been published in America has been published here in England. Uh, I will look through. Um, if I do have copies of the books, I'll, I'll show them because sometimes uh, the UK covers will differ from the US covers, um, so that's just kind of fun to see the differences of those. I will note, uh, if I have read them, whether I agree that they should be on a best books of the year list uh, or not. And uh, so I'll discuss that as well as short summaries of all the books. But I'd love to hear if you have read any of these titles, if you agree and think that they are some of the best books that you've read this year, or if there are any of these books that you're interested in reading, please let me know about that in the comments below. First up is Age of Vice by Deep D. Kapoor, which is a 500 plus page epic uh, set in New Delhi in 2001 one centering around a tragic accident and the repercussions of that, and it follows it through the point of view of an impoverished young man who works for the son of a crime boss. Uh, so it is part crime thriller and part family saga. It's about gangsters and lovers, false friendship, forbidden romance, and the consequences of corruption. It sounds really thrilling. August Blue by Deborah Levy. Uh, so you can see here the, the UK cover versus the US cover. Uh, quite different. I, I think I kind of prefer this. And this is a story of a classical pianist uh, who is called Elsa Anderson. Elsa? I have to do my frozen impression. And, uh, and we follow her, um, during the time of the pandemic, um, after she, uh, scandalously flubbed a very important concert she was giving. And so, uh, she's traveling, sort of swanning around Europe, um, giving lessons, uh, to privileged, um, children, uh, in the piano. And we, we follow her, um, through this time, uh, just her observations, um, about uh, working with these children and uh, but also she believes she has a doppelganger who's kind of following her so there's a kind of double her um, which um, she encounters at various points and it's exploring uh, the her her past um, but also her muddled present and I really enjoyed reading this book uh, Deborah Levy um, is so much fun to, to read because she gives this kind of off kilter perspective and her her protagonist is a kind of eccentric that I really enjoy reading about. Uh, but I have to say, I haven't enjoyed this as some of her other novels and definitely not as much as her autobiographical fiction. Um, so yeah, I think this is a pleasure to read, but I wouldn't call it one of the best books of the year. Vera Loche by Andreas Newman. This is about two garbage collectors in Buenos Aires and uh, their hard lives, uh, their tumultuous present, uh, but also how how they're sifting through memories of the past and how one is suffering from insomnia and having an affair with uh, the other's wife. Uh, there are lots of surprising twists and turns in this. It's written in a very lyrical language and it was first published in 1999, but it's only just recently been translated into English. And apparently it was a big inspiration for author Roberto Bellano. Beyond the Door of No Return by David Diop, uh, translated by Sam Taylor. This is set in the early 1800s in French colonial Senegal and follows a soon-to-be eminent French botanist uh, who falls for a woman who was sold into slavery but escaped to freedom. And we follow um, through the point of view of his daughter who discovers a notebook um, about his experience and this tumultuous romance and this historical 
historical period and、um, time of sa- slavery in Senegal. Now, I loved David Diop's、um, previous novel,、uh, Night All Blood Is Black. It was definitely one of the best books that I'd read that year, and、uh, so I definitely want to read this new book. And yes, I do think the UK cover is much more beautiful. Company by Shannon Sanders. This is a multi generational family saga that occurs over thirteen. Interconnected short stories, and I often say my favorite form of fiction is interconnected short stories because you get a different perspective on the same events and the the same characters, and I find that so fascinating.、Uh, recently, I really enjoyed reading "If I Survive You" by Jonathan Escoffrey, which does a similar thing. And this book is about the Collins family. It follows them、uh, from the 1960s to the the two. Two thousands and about、uh, their various connections and. Disconnections with each other ha- about many different members of the family who are law students and drag performers and musicians. It primarily focuses around Washington D.C. and I cannot wait to read this. I hadn't heard of it before this list, and this is a prime example of introducing me to books that I should really know about. A Cowardly Woman No More by Ellen Cooney. This is about one fateful day in the life of a character named Trisha who works. Works in an office, and she has been passed over for promotion、uh, for a man who is less qualified than her.、Uh, it's at the、uh, annual luncheon for the the company, and she gradually rediscovers、um, her courage while sifting through memories of the past. Eastbound by Melis de Carangal. This is about two individuals who meet on a Trans Siberian railway train.、Uh, one is a bored French woman. And one is a Russian army conscript, and they hatch a plan to help each other over the course of their journey. It's a kind of strangers on a train type situation that mixes the poetic、uh, with the trivial. It's meant to be very fast paced, and it sounds really fun. The Fraud by Zadie Smith. Zadie Smith's very first historical novel. This story is、uh, set in the mid to late 1800s. It's about About the Tichborne trial, which was a famous case about a man who purported to be an heir to a fortune,、uh, but he might have been a fraudster, and it's about a. Famous historical novelist of、uh, that time, who was a peer of Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens himself pops in every once in a while into this story to make some bad jokes, and、uh, the the novel gives a very interesting perspective on Dickens,、uh, the man.、Uh, but it's told through the point of view of Eliza Touchet, who is、uh, a housekeeper、um, for the historical novelist in、uh, this story, and、uh, it gives such an interesting. Interesting perspective on writing historical fiction itself. This is a story that I keep thinking back on as I read new historically set stories and our understanding of them, and and how、um, we're given a certain frame of the past through a historical novelist. And is that manipulating history,、um, or is it giving a different perspective that nonfiction historical texts can't give us? I think it's a really interesting. Interesting question, and this is a fascinating. Fascinating multi-layered story、um, that's that's also a fascinating love triangle and、um, involves a lot of scandal and intrigue. So I was very lucky that、um, I was able to interview Zadie Smith in the the summertime at a pre-publication event, and we had a really interesting、um, conversation. It was wonderful to discuss、um, her research and thought process going into this book, and、uh, she she was in、um, a bit of a A funk that day, and so、um, she said she really appreciated the interview, and、um, she she very kindly wrote this、uh, in my book. Greek Lessons by Han Can. This is set in the city of Seoul and is about a woman who has lost her voice, who is taking a Greek lesson from a man who is losing his sight, and it's about、um, their connection, their surprising connection with each other, and、uh, their experiences、um, from the past, which come into the present. And Han Can is such a fascinating writer. I've loved reading her fiction. 
mentioned in the past, I've heard very mixed things about this new book, uh, but I would like to get to it. it. It is quite short, too. I have some questions for you by Rebecca Mackay. This is about a film professor and podcaster who wants to forget the past, but finds herself sifting through um, her memories, and especially when she um, went to college in the, the 90s, and uh, how her roommate um, was tragically murdered, and whether she has the, the key to, to finally solve this case. Um, it's a story that's uh, about racism and uh, Me Too gender politics, but also our fascination with true crime. It's meant to be very funny and gripping. The Heaven and Earth Grocery Store by James McBride. This begins in the 1970s in a town in Pennsylvania when a new building is being created and when they're putting in the foundations, they discover a well with a skeleton at the bottom of it. And then the story moves back to the 1920s to tell the history of this town and this particular scandal and story um, about the, the, the repercussions of racism and the continuing effects of it within this community. Let Us Descend by Jasmine Ward. This is a historical novel about a woman who is sold south by the white enslaver who fathered her and how she uh, takes comfort in the spiritual world amidst the horrors and brutality of her reality. Jasmine Ward writes in such a poetic and beautiful and powerful way. Northwoods by Daniel Mason. This is a sweeping novel set in a single house in the woods of New England across centuries and the many different people who inhabit this one house. Uh, it's about fate and memories and about the things which connect us uh, across time. The People Who Report More Stress by Alejandro Varela. This is another book of interconnected short stories about the lives of a number of Latinx uh, individuals who retreat into themselves while living on the margins because of the, the stress and anxiety in their lives. It's said that this is a collection of humorous, sexy, and highly neurotic tales. Small Worlds by Caleb Azuma Nelson. Uh, the UK cover is the same as the US cover. And this is a novel about a young man named Stephen who is making the uneasy transition into adulthood of going to university for the first time and uh, the the tumult of his uh, his romantic situation uh, the the romantic uh, tension between him and a long-term uh, friend of his and uh, it's about how he explores his Ghanaian history he returns to Ghana at one point and about going against his father's um, wishes in terms of his profession and uh, to, to how he wants to become a musician, uh, but also he, he trains as a chef at, at one point. I just really enjoyed reading this story um, because he, he writes in such a beautiful and poetic way. Um, I, I found it really powerful and wonderful to read, and I had the pleasure of um, hearing him speak at uh, the Brixton Library here in London, and he signed his book to me um, with, with all my love. I'm I'm sure he writes that in every book, but I like to think that he, he meant it just for me. <laughs> Terror Story by Hilary Lecter. This novel has been called A Fable About Love and an Epic Daydream. It's about a woman with a young family who live in a cramped apartment and one day they discover a door that opens up to an expansive and beautiful terrace within their small apartment. And so it's about how this woman can change things uh, with her mind and change the physical space around her. Um, it sounds really fantastic and wonderful. This is Salvaged by Vahini Vara. This is a collection of short stories which are not connected with each other, so are about a range of characters and situations. Uh, but a lot of the stories uh, explore intimacy, uh, 
and also the nature of childhood. A uh, number of stories are about children. Uh, there's one story about uh, some early teenagers uh, who um, become phone sex operators, and another story about an experimental artist who tries to recreate the ark um, from Noah's ark um, from details in the Bible. Tremor by Teju Cole. Uh, this is about a professor from West Africa who works at Harvard and his meditations on art, uh, colonialism, and education, and his uh, daily encounters with casual racism. The Unsettled by Ayana Mathis. This is a novel about a number of characters involved in Black radical politics in the 1980s, both in Philadelphia and in a small town in Alabama. And it's about trying to form a sense of community outside of the larger white society. Alongside Publishers Weekly Top Fiction of the Year, they have a Top 10 Books of the Year, which are a whole mixtures of uh, styles and genres of books. But they do include five uh, novels in this list. And so I assume that this is their absolute top fiction of the year. So I'm going to talk about those five novels as well, uh, including Biography of X by Catherine Lacey. You can see the UK cover uh, imagery is a kind of variation of the US cover, um, slightly similar, but a bit different. And this story is about a woman whose wife was a radical artist who had died before this novel begins. Um, but she wants to discover more about her mysterious wife's past. So goes on this um, path of interviewing a number of individuals who knew or were associated with her life over the course of her varied life. And I'm trying to track down the, the truth um, about her. This book also proposes like an alternate um, history of America, um, which is so fascinating in the way that she manipulates um, the, the past and details of it to give this new perspective of it, but includes a number of significant cultural figures from our history, and they enter into the narrative in a really fun way. So I found this absolutely fascinating and riveting to read, and it is absolutely one of my top books of the year. The Maniac by Benjamin Labattut. Uh, the UK cover is the same as the US cover, and this is a fictionalization of the scientists behind uh, the nuclear bomb, but also about an AI technology um, which is able to defeat a gaming master um, closer to our present time. And he connects those stories to explore what makes us human and um, about the progression of uh, science and technology over time in our civilization. I loved reading Labattut's uh, novel, When We Cease to Understand the World. He gives such a fascinating perspective on, on history and the history of science. My work by Olga Robin. Um, this is the story of a woman who's a new mother and who experiences an increasing sense of isolation as she and her boyfriend and her new child uh, move to Stockholm, which is snowbound, and uh, how she becomes increasingly estranged from her boyfriend, uh, but also experiences postpartum depression. And so her experiences, which are uh, recorded through a number of different forms, um, from notebooks to diary entries, uh, to letters, to, to prose. And uh, Olga Robin, she wrote a novel called The Employees, which was so imaginative and powerful. This kind of wild, like science fiction story that explores what makes us human. This is a much more domestic tale, but it looks like it explores like similar um, themes and and ideas, but in a very different context. And so this sounds like it'll be great to read over the winter months as well. Same Bed, Different Dreams by Ed Park. This is a 500 plus page epic, which is another uh, revisionist history of a country, um, this time looking at Korea. Uh, so in 1919, uh, the Korean provisional government was formed and it uh, continued until Japan's defeat in World War II. Um, but this novel proposes what might have happened if the KPG had persisted throughout time. And so it mixes historical fact with this 
imagined history, um, which sounds so fascinating and interesting. It's meant to be very comic while giving a grand new view of history. And finally, there is The Ren The Ren by Anne Enright, which explores a family through three generations of Irish women and how the patriarch and grandfather of this family is a famous poet, um, famous for writing love poetry, but there's a real irony to this um, because um, he uh, left the family and he caused a lot of rift and turmoil in it. Um, so the the way that uh, Anne Enright explores um, the contradictions in um, her character's life sounds so enticing. I've loved reading her novels in the past and I've been meaning to pick up a copy of this new book of hers and um, I, I really should go pick up a copy of it right now because um, the, the bookshop um, that is in my community is is open now. Um, it opened since I started making this video. So why don't I go buy a copy of it now and then I can show you the UK cover versus the US cover. Okay, I am back and I was quite nervous at first because when I went into the bookshop, uh, they didn't have any copies on the shelf. It's quite a relatively small bookshop, uh, but they had one last copy in the display window. And so I got that copy and now I have a copy of the novel. And like I said, going through um, lists like this, um, it reminds me about books I've been wanting to read. So I was glad to have an excuse to finally get a copy of Anne and Wright's new novel. Now, looking at this compared to the US cover, um, I like them both. And I really like the, the design of the, the woman holding the bird on this, but I have to say, I think I prefer the US cover. I don't know, what, what do you think? I mean, I think that's largely because I prefer the color green over the color orange, uh, but yeah, that's just my sense and opinion about it. But really looking forward to reading this over um, maybe the, the last weeks of autumn or going into the winter. Um, I think it'll be a great novel. So let me know um, if you have read any of these books or if you want to read any of these books that I have discussed and uh, buy, buy your books at independent bookshops. Um, support independent bookshops. Shops. I'll put a link below to um, bookshop.org links for all of these books if you want to buy any of these books. And it'll also help me out by um, because they're affiliate links. Um, I'll get a very small percentage of uh, any sales from it. And uh, But yeah, mainly it's just good to support independent bookshops if you can and if you can afford to. Um, but uh, if not, um, have a look for these books at your local library. Uh, but also, um, I have a rel relatively new online book club that I started a few months ago. So I'll put a link to that below as well. Um, if you want to check that out and join us, we've been having some fantastic discussions about books, um, new literature, but also classic literature. And um, so yeah, it's it's uh, been so good. So I hope you're doing well and reading good things. And I look forward to exploring new best books of the year lists with you um, in the coming weeks going up to the end of 2023 and everything we need to get done before then and all the books we need to, to read before then. There's no pressure. Um, hopefully we'll get some good relaxing reading time. I'll stop rambling now. I hope you're doing well and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.